really here here's the interesting part okay like it, it performs extremely well it is in the 90 percentile or in a bar exam the lsat it's in 90 percentile sat 93rd percentile sat math 90 percentile it's you know if we go to the uh graph here it really performs um so the blue ones are chat gpt and then gpt4 you can see All right, what's going on guys welcome back to welcome back to another video uh we're gonna take a look at gpt4 that was released i believe two days ago uh and you know we're gonna basically see what is uh new uh what's been improved uh and um you know uh, see some examples of what it can do it's pretty exciting uh the you know the thing that it's been criticized for and i'll make an, a separate video discussing this specifically but it's that, you know, this is not really a research paper. They haven't actually come, on, uh, come out and sort of showed us, you know, uh, how it works, what are the key sort of implementation details that they use and so on. Uh, it's more, you know, uh, this is what we can do now uh, and this is cool. Um, so, but, you know, we'll go through it and you'll uh, see what I mean. Uh, but uh, I just want to give you sort of um, an overview, first of all, sort of what's to, to, to uh, really the key uh, things here. So uh, number one uh, is that it, it's now multimodal, multimodal, uh, and it can take images. So uh, and and it doesn't just do some simple image captioning on the image. You know, it it it, it is able to do some pretty advanced things uh, and has really deep image understanding. Um, so we'll see some examples of that. But this is um uh, this is you know really really uh, one of the key improvements I would say. Uh, and then also um, large context. So, you know, usually it depends on the model, but we've had pretty limited uh, number of sort of tokens we can have uh, in the context before. But now with this one, it, we can have up to 32,000, which is, you know, huge. Uh, so this is a really, really uh, a big improvement. Uh, and, and you know, um, I'm not sure exactly how they do that. You know, we don't... Uh, we yeah i don't know I, if it's just larger uh you know compute available or, or sort of how if they do any tricks on that or so on, i'm not sure i would assume it's just a higher vram usage probably but anyways and then for thirdly we are um also you know getting a lot better reasoning ability uh, i would say or you know not i would say we can see that from the results uh, so th these are sort of the three um, big things, uh, and uh, I thought we could, uh, yeah, this is, uh, and I thought, you know, and I thought, uh, let's just look at, because they had a live stream as well demonstrating this, uh, uh, GPT-4 developed a live stream one day ago, and uh, yeah, so here, what, um, I'm not sure uh, what his name is, but the, this guy, he, uh, he uh, basically made a system prompt, and this is to chat GPT, so GPT 3.5 Turbo. Uh, it says, you are chat GPT, a large language model trained by OpenAI. Follow the user's instructions carefully. And then he inputted an, an article, I believe, and then he asked it, summarize this article into a sentence where every word begins with G. Uh, and, and the assistant here, uh, chat GPT, uh, failed at this task, and this is incredibly difficult uh every word should start with g okay so gpt4 it, it succeeded with that but then a large you know this is a l to g b g so um it now he's gonna i guess show uh, the result with gpt4 if it's you know sort of a very kind of stilted article or something like that maybe it can succeed but for the most part <clears throat> 3.5 just gives up but let's try the exact same prompt the exact same system message in gpt4 and so here, you know, we can see uh, GPT-4 generates groundbreaking, grandiose gains, greatly galvanizing generalized AI goals. Uh, you know, it failed here with the AI, but, you know, Matt, this is extremely difficult, you know. Oh, kind uh, of. Actually, uh, if we take a look at, he, he also said AI doesn't count, that's cheating. And he wrote, an, uh, GPT-4 wrote a new one. Gigantic GPT-4 garners groundbreaking growth, greatly galvanizing global goals. 
I don't know. Like this is mind blowing to me. Uh, I'll show you another sort of more mind blowing thing. <laughs> uh, so I have here <clears throat> a. Nice All right. The image is funny. All right. I'll show you another one example here. So what he did here is that he has. Uh, well, we'll watch it together. Fun mockup of a joke website. Uh, definitely worthy of being put up on my refrigerator. Oh my god, that was hard to. Uh, he showed it so quickly. I have here. A nice hand-drawn mock-up. Okay, here. So, my joke website really... Uh, I can't even read what it is. Uh, some punchline. Uh, copyright OpenAI 2023. Uh, okay, so this is like his... Ex this is his example, okay? Of what he wants his website to look like. He sends this as a prompt. He takes a picture on his phone. He sends the picture to uh to uh gpt4 and ask gpt4 to generate the code for that website um uh let's see and drawn beautiful art if i do say so myself to working and then uh it actually codes the example website which is you know it that, that's really cool and i'll show you some examples from the paper as well Actually, we can't call it a paper. Paper. It's not a paper. I'll discuss this in in the next video, sort of making a more uh, discussion around this. Uh, you know, and, and a lot of people have criticized OpenAI for this uh, because it's not a research paper. They call it a paper, but it, it's not a paper, really. All right, all right. So let's go through it then. So GPT four technical uh, report. See here, they don't actually call it paper. Um, one interesting thing is that. Uh, they had a simulated bar exam and it scored in the top 10% of test takers. And this is a, a big, big improvement where the GPT-3, I believe in the bottom 10%. So it, it's improved a lot in that and m many other tasks as well. And all they really say, okay, like all they say is GPT-4 is a transformer-based model pre-trained to predict the next token in a document. This is, I mean, we know that, come on. Like that's not, that's not, that's no info at all. Like, I don't know. Yeah, all right, let's just focus on what they actually tell us. But uh, you know, GPT-4 uh, is an important area of study because it can be used in a lot of stuff. Uh, they uh, tested it quite robustly and it performs quite well and it uh, outscores the vast majority of human test takers. So that's sort of the takeaway. Um, here, it's not, as we can see, it's not a paper, sort of usually you cite the people that wrote the paper, the research that did the research. Here, they just want to uh, refer to it as open AI, so the company. Uh, if we go down, um, you know, one thing they did is that they talked about here. Um, they, um, you know, obviously they they did sort of normal training uh, for GPT-4, and then they also did some reinforcement learning from human feedback, uh, similar as ChatGPT. Um, they also did a predictable scaling, so they did uh, a model that can predict how much it improves if we scale and improve uh, or increase the model size. Uh, and they did a pretty good job or they show that it was pretty accurate. Uh, and if, if you go with the figures here, we can see that sort of the, the dotted line is the prediction of how much it will improve uh, as we increase uh, the compute. And then, uh, you know, uh, we can see that the actual observed are pretty, uh, pretty, you know, very, very close to the to the predicted line. Um, so that's interesting. You know, they, then they can sort of predict. You know, um, from this point, how much should we uh, increase? Uh, because it will bottle, it will limit. You know, it will uh, uh, sort of plateau, and uh, so there's no reason to sort of go beyond this. And then uh, let's see as well. Uh, yeah, it, it also improved on, or it uh, also did coding problems. Uh, one interesting thing as well is that uh, they uh, mentioned that in many cases, actually, where you increase uh, the model, uh, you know, ADA is a lot more smaller than Babbage, Babbage and then uh, Curie, and then you have ChatGPT. Uh, we can see that the model actually uh, decreases its performance uh, on you know certain tasks, uh, but um, here uh, GPT-4 sort of uh, is able to 
mitigate this general trend and sort of improve, uh, e you know, improve, uh, even though it's a lot larger. So that uh, I presume, I don't actually, they don't say how large it is. So I don't, by presuming, uh, I'm assuming that it's uh, larger. All right. So what's really interesting here, you know, they really don't tell you much, uh, really here, here's the interesting part. Okay. Like it, it performs extremely well. It is in the 90 percentile or in you know, a bar exam, the LSAT, it's in 90 percentile SAT, 93rd percentile SAT math, 90 percentile. It's, you know, if we go to the, uh, graph here, it really performs. Um, so the blue ones are chat GPT and then GPT four, you can see, uh, for example, here, the bar exam is pretty low here. They improve that a lot. I assume it's from data. Uh, um, but, you know, in general, it improves. Um, and I guess interestingly is like, which which are the difficult uh, topics? Uh, this is difficult to say because we don't know, you know, if this is because of data limitation or so on. But in general, uh, to me at least, it seems like if we look at the top performing, uh, where it performs the best, it's sort of env environmental science, uh, SAT, I don't know what that is, EBRW, art history, psychology, and history. And I think sort of those subjects are more um, memorization based, maybe, uh, where, you know, it's, uh, it. there's definitely reasoning involved, right? Uh, but it's, de it's much more sort of knowing, uh, you know, you know, history, for example, that is knowing uh, and memorizing a lot of stuff. Uh, similarly for, you know, actually, you know, science, uh, it, there's definitely a lot of reasoning, but it's also in many cases, uh, knowledge based, just remembering things. But if you look at, uh, for example, its ability on calculus, uh, chat GPT is, doesn't exist here almost. And then it improved a lot, but in general, you can see that it's pretty low in, in general on the code forces rating. Uh, I don't know what AMC 12 is actually, it's over, but it improved on that. Uh, AMC 10, maybe we can look at what that is. Yeah, so AMC 10, 12 is Mathematical Association of America. So it's it's pretty bad at math. Uh, and I would assume this is good for mathematicians and so on. Uh, we're not going to be replaced, I guess, hopefully soon. Uh, and then, uh, uh, interestingly enough, it's not very good at English literature and it did not improve uh, from GPT to GPT, uh, GPT 3.5 to 4. But remember too that, okay, so this is this is the reasoning ability. That's the third point. Really the number one point is the multimodal images, like being able to take in images. And the second ability is it's uh, extremely large context. You know, before people were trying to write really long articles, maybe even writing books, all right? Uh, how do you write a book or how do you even summarize a book with uh, GPT? Because you have such limited uh, context. Now you can do, it's not... It's not possible to do that still. You can't just send in a book, but uh, you can, uh, you know, as it's larger context, you can do that much easier than before. So, uh, those, you know, remember that this is just sort of one of the aspects how it's improved. It's not only in this uh, sort of the chart here. Uh, yeah, so it examines human level performance. Uh, interestingly enough, like most of these capabilities come from the pre-training process. Um, and then not the reinforcement learning human feedback part. Uh, the, the RLHF part is really just to make it uh, helpful to humans, like how we communicate as humans. Uh, it doesn't actually gain information. And as we'll see, it actually uh, can worsen the ability and and it can worsen the calibration performance. Like we'll see what they, uh, what they, uh, they show it later on. But anyways, here, uh, improvement in multiple tasks. I don't know. There's not much to say there really. Here is in pretty interesting. So they, they send uh, visual input and they, this is really interesting to see sort of the, the ability of it. You can send in this image here and uh, you ask, you know, what is funny about this image? Describe it panel by panel. And so if you look at panel one, it says a smartphone with a VGA connector, a large blue one, 15 pin, pin connector typically used for computer monitors plugged into its charging port. I mean, this is really uh, complex, right? And the fact that it's able to do this uh, is pretty amazing. So the visual input is uh, probably the largest here. 
Um, but here they mentioned some limitations, you know, in general, right? Every G every sort of generative model based on transformers, sort of based on next word prediction, uh, has seems to have this problem that it hallucinates stuff. And, you know, I made a, a, a LinkedIn post sort of joking about this, but it's actually, you know, it's, it's true. This is the biggest limitation. You can't really trust it. Uh, uh, you know, it knows a lot, but it, it can sound confident, but actually just output uh, rubbish. So this is uh, one of the uh, largest uh, or biggest limitations. Here is also, they have internal factual eval by category. Uh, so, you know, we have no idea what they evaluated on. They have some internal data, but basically they say that it's improved. So that's nice. <laughs> and then uh, it lacks knowledge uh, of the vast majority of its pre-training cuts off in September 2021. Uh, what does the vast majority mean? How much of the data comes after? Again, we have no idea. Uh, let's see. So there's, mm, I don't know. Here's the interesting part about the um, sort of the uh, the fine tuning or the post training. I I believe this is because I'm pretty sure this is because of the reinforcement learning human feedback. Where sort of yeah, before, if it said that it's 50% uh, probable in this answer, then it was pretty pretty darn close to 50%. Uh, you know, actually being correct. So the uh, the probability that it outputted uh, had a you know very a linear perfect uh, correspondence to the actual. So if it said that you know I'm 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 a hundred percent sure, guys, like this is the right answer, you can we can see here that it was maybe like in ninety five or something. Uh, and if it was zero, then it was pretty close to zero. But after the the uh, the fine tuning uh, using RLHF, we can see that this uh, actually destroyed the calibration. So now when it says that it's 50% sure, you know, it, it, that doesn't correspond to the actual correct answer as much. So, uh, you know, it hurts the calibration, uh, interestingly enough. Uh, and it, so it doesn't, by doing RLHF, it's more that it's making it conducive or making it, uh, you know, more into the format of human communication rather than actually improving uh, the performance, uh, which is um, pretty interesting. Also here they did, uh, you know, they made it safe uh, or boring. <laughs> you can't uh, ask it to generate chemical schemes or do it, make it do, I don't know, ask it for illegal things or whatever. So it's basically like pretty boring. Uh, but yeah, it, now it says my purpose as an AI model is to assist and provide information and then helpful and safe, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, yeah. all right. Anyways, uh, moving on. It um, it also, they uh, improved the behavior rate on disallowed and sensitive content. So now if there's sensitive prompts, uh, it, it, you can't um, like bypass as easily. Um, you know, normally you can make it do things it shouldn't do by sort of modifying the prompt. But all right, that's the conclusion kind of, they are, uh, you know, really, I mean, if you're now, you should be like, you should be feeling kind of irritated, maybe like you have no idea how this works, right? Uh, there's so many things that is, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, just un un unclear, uh, unfortunately. But uh, there we have it. It improves a lot. OpenAI, uh, you know, has you know, to be honest, they've made really great products and they, their products are so good that we can't ignore them. Uh, we're going to use them. Uh, but it really, you know, in many ways it hurts because uh, this is probably going to change the direction of research. Uh, or, you know, it's not going to be research anymore uh, if this is what's going to continue. But I'll talk more about that in the next video. Uh, what I wanted to do is, uh, let's see, I wanted to also... Yeah, so I, I played around with it a bit, uh, GPT-4. If you have chat GPT+, Plus, you can actually use it uh, with a cap of 100 messages every four hours. And, you know, in general, it says here, like the reasoning is uh, really high, conciseness is really high, but the speed is low. If you look at chat GPT, you have high speed and re uh, like pretty good reasoning and not that good conciseness. So after playing around with it, also, um, it... Uh, helped me write a really good resume. So thank you for that. 
And then also uh, it's really improved in writing code. I noticed it's kind of slow though. So I'm not sure if I would use it, but if there's sort of a really difficult question that it, ChatGPT doesn't answer, then I would definitely use GPT-4. So uh, definitely uh, interesting and sort of to think about what applications can we build with this? How will this change things? Um, you know, these are uh, exciting things to think about and maybe also uh, pretty scary. All right, I think that's it. Um, I'll make a new video as well where we will discuss, uh, you know, the ethical and for moral uh, aspect of this, which OpenAI again has been really criticized about. And, uh, you know, I'll talk about that in the next video.